What is going on guys? Dip and Easel back. We are here at Iron Ape Coating and Fab or Panhandle Precision Performance and Powder Coating. That's a mouthful. But I know you guys love seeing updates on what's going on over here at the shop. So we have a lot of updates. What's up doggos? So yesterday and the day before, I've been welding up some boat stands. This is a really heavy duty boat stand. I'll show you what they're used for over there. But I ran out of steel to go from here to the middle to there. And then we weld some plates. Went ahead and punched these out on the iron worker yesterday. Just like that. Just punch some holes so we don't have to drill it. Weld those plates on that cross piece and then we can screw some wood to uh, hold the boat so the boat's not sitting on steel. So I went ahead and welded that one up yesterday. Welded this one up the day before. So this is it with wheels on it. I gotta weld some wheels on that one. Used uh, not as heavy duty steel, but it only has to hold up a 300, 400 pound aluminum boat. So these are the plates. And then you just get a piece of wood and then sink some uh, screws down into that. So um, these are the stands right here. Basically just hold the boat, nothing to it. And then um, Colton's been working on this first gen right here. It's a 1993, I believe, dually. Um, the dude spent some money, let me tell you what. He got a brand new exhaust, brand new turbo, brand new manifold. Uh, I think he has a... Uh, Mishimoto radiator in here. You got a fluid dampener. And I think he might have gotten like one of those 800 horsepower VE pumps. I'm not sure. But um, interesting choice uh, setup that he went with. He went with a T3 manifold. Don't know why. It looks kind of stupid with that um, overhang on the manifold. He should have went with the T4 and T4 turbo, but he got the HE351, which they're gonna have to do some custom fabrication for the intercooler charge pipe um, because the air box goes right here. And I think he did get a, um, a cold air intake or some other intake besides the stock one. But the stock one's gonna come like this. So the way that this is set up is gated, waste gated, so you can't really clock the um, the housing so they're gonna have to get a straight uh, a boot charge pipe either a 90 boot or they're gonna weld together a um, a 90 on there and then it goes straight down to another 90 to the intercooler and uh, yeah they're also gonna have to make a custom downpipe for this thing as well because the, st uh, the, um, the pipe that came with the exhaust uh, kit isn't gonna work. So Colton's gonna work his magic build those charge pipes and the custom exhaust but interesting setup Should have went with the t4, but um, It's whatever he wanted to go with Still working on the Duramax chase is almost finished with it Not sure what he all did to this thing. I can't really remember but he's working on you know tidying up the uh, fuel lines and all the wiring and uh intercooler tube, charge pipe, whatever. Um, and update on the fourth gen. Still waiting on the head from the machine shop, so we can't really do anything with this um, until we get that back. So I know a lot of you guys have been wondering about the, fir the fourth, I keep saying wanting to say, I keep wanting to say first gen, fourth gen, Brennan's fourth gen. Um, and yeah, so stuck on that waiting on the machine shop and then we'll come out here and I showed you guys a little bit in last video about the skid steer that broke a track um, I'm waiting on a guy to message me back on Facebook Messenger because he is selling a 
uh, Kubota skid steer track, 17.7 inches wide. Uh, it's got decent tread. It's a C tread. And these, this isn't a C tread, but to get this thing out of here, you know, they want like $1,500, $2,000 for a new track. And if I can pick one up for 300 bucks, a guy agreed on 300 bucks for a track, a uh, used track, um, Clay's gonna do it just to get it out of this mud hole. Because if you look right there, that track is, uh, is busted, so. Oh, I don't want to fall down. So I might be going in um, Chase's truck. Uh, Clay's here. Or not Clay. Um, Reed. I might be going in Chase's truck to go pick up the new track. Five hundred and fifty-five hundred are still for sale. Come get it. But I'm heading to Clarksville right now. I'm gonna go pick up a skid steer track. Driving the old second gen. It's nice driving a second gen again. Me and Chase has to, uh, we're gonna take the doors off of my wreck Cummins and put them on this truck. But I stopped off in Graceville, to show you guys the uh, skid steer track. Um, it's in decent condition for a used track. Like I said, I, we really just need it to uh, get that skid steer running again until he buys, you know, a $2,000, $1,500 track for the skid steer. So the total trip was about hour 15. I'm still at 15 minutes, so I drove about an hour um, already here in Graceville. But Chase redid the exhaust on this truck. I haven't looked at it yet. I know it's an axle dump, not too fond of an axle dump, but this is what he did for his setup. So it's just literally a straight pipe with a uh, Axle dump. Like I said not too, not too big on axle dumps, but it's everyone's preference. But let's go. Got 15 minutes. Back to the shop, and we'll see you there. Back of the shop, Chase left. He had to go run home real quick in his truck. Got the uh, skid steer track here. I walk out here to my car, and this tire is split. The passenger side thing split on Christmas. Now that one's gonna split. I would drive it home, but I know I'm probably gonna get a flat, so Brendan's gonna let me borrow that blue dually that's for sale uh, for a couple days until I get a new tire. We'll take it over here. I'll just buy the tire. We'll take that off over here. And then we got a tire change machine. Just change it right up right there. We'd have to get it balanced though. That's the only thing. But I am going to finish out these boat stands. I'm going to weld these big old 10 inch wheels on here. Got it all cleaned up, ready to go. And then instead of doing 
the cross bracing that's gonna go right there. Me and Chase decided we're just gonna weld the plates straight on that and have the two by six carry all the weight. It's only gonna hold a two, 300, 400 pound boat. So um, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna get to this. GoPro is about to die. So not sure how much you're gonna see of this, but let's get to it. size welded up. And now she a cart, baby. Hell yes. Now I'm gonna weld those plates. Six plates, and this cart will be done. It's ready for wood. Don't help that I'm filming. You tell that track got some memory to it. You got to fucking kidding me, motherfucker. Fucking shit. You don't want to see me. I fucking love these shoes. No, bro. <laughs> Hold up. There's okay. Look at all the weld. Oh, yeah. Hold up. I go back that way a little bit. Alright. Let me get right here beside you, Colton. I got my dang phone so I was going to show you that video, but as soon as we're doing this right now. What video? Of him doing the donuts in the field on his truck. Hey, nobody let me forget my fucking phone is on the back. You ready? One, two, three. Alright, let's sit for a second. Push him. Alright, now let's sit. We gotta get those. Yep, keep over it. Get over the back. Just about. Yeah. Come on. All right. Zoom at the point almost like all right guys so last night no we tried getting that skid steer track on and we couldn't we just couldn't get the back end of the skid steer lifted up high enough to slide that track and get it all situated um they were supposed to bring ed's excavator down there to um, help get it out. It rained a little bit today, so I don't know if they did it or not. Um, they were supposed to do it in the morning. It is now four o'clock in the afternoon. And um, I was, my plan today was to go look at the truck that the MV4500 is coming out of for this white truck right here. Um, that didn't happen. And um, I was gonna work on the 12 valve. It was raining, that didn't happen. Uh, I actually ordered a tire for my car. That's why I'm driving this um, 3500. Because my tire had a crack in it and I didn't want to drive it home 15 minutes and uh, get a flat on the way home at, you know, 1.30 in the morning. We were out there for <laughs> almost till two o'clock. But uh, I drove this 3500 home and it is a lot of fun. It sounds really good. Um, 
when you shift, obviously it's a manual, so it sounds really good. Uh, so I'm gonna go head back up to the shop, see what they're working on, maybe grab some beer, and uh, enjoy ourselves on a, on a Thursday night. So, um, you guys stay tuned. I noticed that this truck is for sale, by the way. Um, first gear is like really low, so you can start out in second gear if you wanted to and um, you won't have any problem speeding up, so. We'll head to the shop. so good when you ship man can't wait for my truck to sound like this there it is this on a buy speed the it's really hard to find me 4500s and 5600s around here so a buy speed is the best i'm gonna get if, unless i want to pay like three grand for a used mb4 mb 5600 that needs to be rebuilt which I'm getting a really good deal from the guy. Uh, I'm getting the transmission, the transfer case, the pedals, the slave cylinder, all that stuff for the swap. Um, I probably will have to get a drive shaft made because the transmission and transfer case is gonna be longer than this two-wheel drive one that I have on my truck. So, but anyway, a five-speed, you just wanna grab that last gear. But hey, it'll work for what I needed to. It'll get my truck driving again. And um, it's just a lot of fun. Well, we couldn't get the track on. Uh, the guy had it listed as an SVL 90 uh, track. Clay has an SVL 90 or 95. He listed as a 95. Clay has a 95. Turns out it's three links too short. Chase thinks it came off a of Bobcat because Bobcats, I guess, have uh, 55 links or something like that. I don't know. But all in all, it didn't fit. They took the sprocket off. They're going to try to pull it on with the excavator and see if they can do it like that. I'm actually um, headed to Echo to go pick up the MV4500. So, uh, also I did change the tire on my car, um, but I'm driving the truck today because I got, got some monies. Oh, shit, money's falling out. But uh, driving the truck today. Um, this one is for sale, but I think it's not gonna be for sale because one of our buddies wants to buy it. Um, but it, it gets the dip and diesel seal of approval because I love driving this truck um, I just don't need another second gen right now at least um, Because I'm building that second gen that I have and then I already have a first gen. I would love this truck, but I'm not gonna buy it um, It's fun to drive though Can't wait to get the, uh, the old MV 4500. So we're pulling it out of a Hold on we're pulling it out of a four-wheel drive truck. So it's gonna have the transfer case and everything like that. I just love the way this truck sounds when you shift. Oh, baby. Tell you what, this is probably the straightest second gen, driving second gen that I've ever driven. Like I'm not even moving my hand at all to correct for the sloppy steering. Straightest 
second gen I've ever driven. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull that MB4500 out of the truck. This is going to be the end of this video because that needs to be its own video, pulling the MB4500 out because we've been waiting for months and months and months and we are finally going to do it. I am uh, about 40 minutes away from where the truck is at, so I guess we'll see you guys uh, in next video. So guys, take it easy and we'll see you guys later. Get the diesel out.